Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to be looking at the sine ratio. So this is your second lesson. Now if you remember SOHCAHTOA, this is going to be the SO, so the S-O-H, and the S stands for sine, the O stands for opposite, and the H stands for hypotenuse. So it's sine equals opposite over hypotenuse and we're going to look at that further um, but if that helps you to just have that reference at the top of your page go ahead and write that down right now now many trades use this uh, particular situation so for example on the right here uh, we have a pipe fitter and they're looking at figuring out what that distance is so they have to calculate for that distance which in this case is the hypotenuse now they use this sign ratio to calculate um, based off of the angles that they know so they know that they have an angle of 60 degrees here and they may know what their offset is, so that height is that they have to bring it up. And they want to figure out what their hypotenuse will be so that they can calculate the length that they need to cut that pipe at. So we're going to dive into examples like that today. Um, but let's first start off with writing down the information for a triangle that we need to understand how to use this sine ratio. So to start, what we're going to look at first is if we had this angle right here. So we knew what this was, and we're going to put the theta symbol down there. So that symbol always means theta. So the angle that we know is in this bottom right corner, and we want to use the opposite and the hypotenuse when we're calculating using the sine ratio. The opposite is always going to be the side that is directly across from the angle that you are using. So if you know the angle in the bottom right, the side that you are going to be using is directly across from this, and this would be your opposite. The next thing that we need for this formula is to know the hypotenuse. And our hypotenuse is always our longest side, and it is also the side that is across from our 90 degrees. So our 90 degrees is in the bottom right there, and this is going to be our hypotenuse. So I'm just going to put height for short. So we have our opposite, we have our hypotenuse, and we have our angle. Those are the three different pieces that you need to be able to use this sine ratio. Now if we were looking at the sine ratio, the way that we would write this out for the formula would be sine, so S-I-N-E, theta, because that will be our angle that we know, equals our opposite, over our hypotenuse. Now if we were to make this shorter and look at kind of the abbreviation, we'd be looking at sine theta equals O over H. So you have opposite over hypotenuse. So if you prefer to write that out when you're actually calculating, um, that's the shorter version instead of writing out the full word every time. Now, looking at this diagram that they've given us with the triangle, so with a side of 4, 5, and 3, and we have the angles of X, Y, and Z, remember angles are always going to be capital letters, we're going to fill in the information. So it says the side opposite of angle X is. Well, angle X is over here, and we want to know what's opposite of that. So our length for that side would be 3. Next it asks for the angle, or sorry, the side that is opposite of Z. So we have Z here, and we're going across, and that would be 4. Then it says the side opposite angle Y, so we have angle Y, which is 90 degrees. And we're saying it is also called, well, our longest side on a triangle is always called our hypotenuse. And the length 
would be five. Let's just rewrite that. Five. Now, if we were asked to calculate for sine x here, so we're trying to figure out what angle x is, which would be this angle up top here, we would want to do opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite of x is going to be 3. So 3 would go on top, and then we would want to write our hypotenuse. Well, our hypotenuse is going to be 5 in this situation. So for sine x, we would have 3 over 5. If we were looking at sine z, or z, so we have this angle down here, and this would be where my theta is. We want our opposite, which is right across from it, so 4 over my hypotenuse, which is still 5. So it's always, your opposite is always going to change based off of the angle that you are talking about. Your hypotenuse, though, will always be your hypotenuse. That doesn't change. Now, in example one, it says use your calculator to determine the sine ratio. So a sine ratio is going to give us a decimal answer. So it's going to be 0. Point something, and we're going to figure out exactly what it is. So it says round to four decimal places. Be sure your calculator is in degrees. So make sure if you have different modes on your scientific calculator that it's reading DEG at the top of it. So it should be in degrees mode. Now the next thing that you want to do is type in sine 15 and see what you get. What you should be getting is 0 0.258. Eight. So we're going to four decimal places here, so you should get 0 0.2588. If we look at sine 30, so sine 30, typing it into your calculator, should give you 0 0.5000. If we went to four decimal places, you would also just, it may show up on your calculator as just 0 0.5. For C, it says sine 45, and what you should be getting is 0 0.7071. Now, for sine 67, I'm going to leave for you to complete on your own, and then check the notes to make sure you are doing this correct. Now, a hint here would be, is if we look at sine 15, it was 0.25. Sine 30 was 0.5, sine 45 is 0.7. So you can see that it's increasing each time. So it should be greater than 0 0.7 for sine 67. So what did you notice about the values in the sine ratio as the angles get bigger? Well, the angles are increasing and your ratio is getting bigger as well. So your angles are increasing and your ratio is getting increased as well. Now if we are looking for an angle that would give you a sine ratio of 1, well that angle would be sine 90. So 90 degree angle will give you a ratio of 1. In example two here, it says to calculate the value of sine A to two decimal places. So important part here is you're going to two decimal places and you should end up with the exact same answer that I'm getting. So we're looking for sine A, which means we're looking for this angle here and this is where I'd put my theta. So the theta or degrees is what we're looking for. So we're trying to figure out exactly what degree angle A is going to be. In order to do this, we have to use that sine ratio where we're going to have sine theta equals our opposite over our hypotenuse. When we're looking at A, our opposite is going to be our 4.3 and our hypotenuse is going to be our 6.9. So we have sine A 
equals 4.3 over 6.9. The next thing we'll get is we'll do 4.3 divided by 6.9. So sine A stays equals 4.3 divided by 6.9. And remember, we're going to two decimal placement. So we're looking at 0 0.62 as your answer for 4.3 divided by 6.9. Now, this is giving us our ratio. We want to figure out what our actual angle is. So the way that we'll go about doing this is doing second function sine on your calculator. That'll give you sine with a negative 1. So second function sine gives you sine negative 1, and then you're going to be putting in your 0 0.62, and this will give us an angle of 38 degrees. So angle A equals 38 degrees. If we're looking at B over here, we have A in the corner over here, and we have all the different sides. So it's important that we choose the correct sides when we're calculating for this. If we're looking for sine A equals opposite over hypotenuse, well, sine A equals opposite. It's going to be right across there. So we're 5.2. And our hypotenuse is always directly across from our 90 degrees. So 9.6. So we're going to have 5.2 over 9.6. Your first thing to do now is do 5.2 divided by 9.6. Sine A comes down equals 0 0.54. So again, you're going to two decimal places. And we want to turn our ratio into an angle. So what we need to do is do sine negative 1. So the way you do that on your calculator is second function sine. And then you put in your 0 0.54. And you should get an answer rounding to a whole number, which is 33 degrees. So angle A equals 33 degrees. So important here too, when you're giving me an angle, you're always going to round it to a whole number. So even if it was 33.2, then you would round that to 33. Or if it was 33.7, then you would round that to 34. So you're always giving your angle as a whole number with no decimals. Now the sine ratio can be used to help you find the missing parts of a right triangle. And that's what we we're just doing above. The important thing though is this is only going to work on a right triangle. In example two here, it says to calculate the length of x. So we're trying to find now a side. The previous questions we were looking for an angle. We're still going to use the same sine ratio law. So we're going to use sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Now this time though, we have different information. We have an angle of 58, and we don't know x, but we know our hypotenuse of 9.7. Now what we do here is we we'd write down sine and our angle, which is 58, equals our opposite, well, opposite right now for us is x over our hypotenuse, which is 9.7. What we want to do here is do a cross multiplication. For this sign, what it's really over is over 1. Because if you divide it by 1, it's still the same thing. So to set up our ability to do cross multiplication, you'd put the sign 58 over 1. Now what we're going to do is our cross multiplication. Well, 1 multiplies with x, and the 9.7 will multiply with the sign 58. So what this looks like is x equals 
9.7 sine 58. If you put in 9.7 multiplied by sine 58, what we should get for a length of x is x equaling 8.23. Now, looking back at the top, we can see that it's in meters, so we have 8.23 meters as our answer for our missing length. For b here, we have the same type of situation. We want to solve for x, which is a missing length. We have an angle, and we know our hypotenuse. So if we have sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, well, sine, we have our angle of 23, equals our opposite directly across is our x over our hypotenuse which is right across from our 90 degrees so we have 9.7 and we have the same type of problem here so we have sine over 1 do our cross multiplication we get x equaling 9.7 multiplied by sine 23 and what you should get for a length of x equaling 3.79. And then you'd look up at your unit, and it is meters. So you get 3.79 meters. And that would be your final answer. So for both of these questions, we knew an angle, we knew our hypotenuse, and we didn't know our um, opposite side. So this is the exact way that you would multiply these together um, to get your final answer. Looking at example three here, we have a real life situation. So we're looking at a ladder which is 8.5 meters long, makes an angle of 72 degrees with the ground. How far up the side of the building will it reach? Well, they've laid out our information here. We have our angle, which is 72, and then we have a length of our ladder, which is 8.5 meters, and we're trying to figure out the height. So our opposite, our angle, so our side opposite our angle, which will be our height that the ladder reaches up the wall. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the sine ratio. We have sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. We know our angle, so we have sine of 72 equals, well, if you look back over here, our opposite is h, which is our height, and then our hypotenuse is 8.5. So we have sine 72 over 1, and we do our cross multiplication, which gives us h equaling 8.5 sine 72. You'll multiply those together, so 8.5 multiplied by sine 72, and you'll get h equaling 8.08 .08 meters. And that'll be your height for your unknown. So this height here is 8.08 .08 meters. So it's reaching up just over 8 meters on the wall. In example 4, it says to calculate for x. In this one here, we have an angle. We know our opposite. We don't know our hypotenuse though. So our hypotenuse is going to be x. We're using the same ratio, so sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Well, sine, we know our angle is 33, our opposite is 7.8, and our hypotenuse is going to be x. Now this is still over 1, 
and we do our cross multiplication. So this multiplies here, this multiplies over here. There's two ways about going for solving this. We can do our cross multiplication and then divide the sign off of it because we'd get x multiplied by sine 33 and then we want x by itself so we'd have to just divide both sides by sine 33. Or what we could also do is flip the whole equation. So whenever you're unknown, so your x or your variable is on the bottom, what you can do is flip the whole thing over. So what you'd have is 1 sine 33 equals x over 7.8. Now from here, your 7.8 multiplies with your 1 and you get 7.8 divided by sine 33 equaling x. So you do 7.8 divided by sine 33, and your x should equal 14.32. And let's look up here. We're looking at millimeters. So 14.32 millimeters would be your final answer. Now for this one over here, we have a triangle that's slightly on an angle here, but it's still a 90 degree triangle, so we can use this sine ratio. We have our angle at the top here, our opposite we know, which is right across, and our hypotenuse we don't know. So we we'll use the sine ratio, which is sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. So we have sine of 70 equals our opposite, which is 12.1, and then our hypotenuse, which is x. Now in this one, I'll show you the full steps without flipping it. If you want to flip it, you can, but I'll show you the other way of calculating it. So, what you would do here is you do your cross multiplication, cross multiplication. So we'd have x sine 70 equals 1 multiplied by 12.1. Now, 1 times 12.1 well, this just gets rid of the 1, and we're left with 12.1. Now, we want to get x by itself, so we divide by sine 70. And what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So divide by sine 70. And this cancels it off on the left side, leaving you with just x equaling 12.1 divided by sine 70. Now this works out the same way as if we flipped it and then we did that multiplication. So your last thing that you need to do is x equals 12.1 divided by sine 70 and x should equal 12.88 and our unit if we look back up here is centimeters. So we'll write down our unit of centimeters on our final answer. So you should have 12.88 centimeters. Now moving on to our last page here. What we're going to talk about is angle of depression and angle of elevation or inclination. So when we're looking at something right here, in this diagram you're using your eyesight as your line that breaks it up. So above where your sight is looking straight ahead is going to be called your angle of elevation. So think about an elevator, it's going up. So elevating is going to be anything above your line of sight when you're string, staring straight forward. And depression, you can always think about down. So you're down right now, so you're looking for an angle of depression. It's going to be anything below 
looking straight um, is going to be your angle of depression. So the angle of depression is the angle formed between the horizontal and the line of sight while looking down. And the angle of elevation or inclination is the angle formed between the horizontal and the line of sight while looking up. In this last question here, example five, it says at the top of a cliff by the ocean, Cedric sights a boat at an angle of depression of 48 degrees. So angle of depression of 48 degrees. If the top of the cliff is 73 meters, so cliff is 73 meters above the surface of the water, that should say water, and Cedric is two meters tall, so Cedric's two meters tall. How far is Cedric from the boat? So we're looking at the distance from the boat. Well, let's draw this out quickly. If we have somebody on a cliff, and this cliff is 73 meters. So we have 73 meters right here. We have to then also think about, well, Cedric is two meters tall. So we have a person standing up, and they are two meters tall. So we're adding on, again, another two meters to the top of where they're looking at, because you're looking at the line of sight. So that's going to be from right up here, where they're looking out. And we can see a boat at an angle of depression of 48 degrees. So going straight out is going to be our horizontal. So that's our zero. And then we can see a boat that is at an angle of depression. So if we're looking down this way, we can see a nice boat. Let's call this a boat. And we can see the boat at an angle of depression, so this angle right here, of 48 degrees. Now, if we know looking straight out is a flat line, and we think about the cliff as a flat line straight down, it's going to make a 90 degrees. So we have 90 degrees subtract 48 degrees which will leave us with 42 degrees. So this angle right here is going to be 42 degrees. Now we can start making our triangle. So this is our water. This is going to be our 90 degrees right here. We have an angle at the top, which is 42 degrees. And then this is our line of sight. So what we want to use is our sine ratio. Well, we need to know our opposite and we need to know our hypotenuse. Well, we don't know our hypotenuse because that's what we're trying to figure out. So we're trying to figure out what our h is. Now, we don't know our opposite here because our opposite from our angle here would be our value that we need to know. So we can't use that 42 degrees. But one thing we do know is a triangle adds up to 180 degrees. So if I did 180 degrees, subtract 90, subtract 42, I'm going to find out that this angle right here equals 48 degrees which was the same as our angle of depression. So this angle right here is 48 degrees. Now I can use this opposite, so the height of the cliff plus the two meters for Cedric, to calculate what my hypotenuse is going to be. So we have our sine ratio, so sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. We have a sine of 48 degrees equals my opposite. So we have 73 plus 2. Let's just write this down over here so we know where it's coming from. So 73 plus 2 equals 75. 
meters. So we have 75 meters over our hypotenuse, which is our unknown value. So this is going to be our x. Now again, this is over 1. And what we want to do is our cross multiplication. So we cross multiply, cross multiply. And you can either flip the values over. So you can do a whole flip and flip. Or you can do the full method where you cross multiply and then you divide sine 48 to get it by itself. So if I flip this, I have 1 over sine 48 equals x over 75. And I cross multiply, cross multiply. Well, this x, sorry. This x stays where it is, and this is going to be 75 over sine 48 equals x. So we do 75 divided by sine 48, and what we should get is x equaling 100.92. And our unit is meters. So that means that that boat is 100.92 meters away from Cedric using that line of sight. Now that'll finish off our lesson for today. And we'll be looking at the cosine ratio next class. If you have any questions, please make sure you send me a message on Teams. Other than that, have a great day.